So here we are again, and uh, we continue with our series about bold I approach on prayer. And I'm thinking that many of us have asked the question, either outright or to ourselves, how do I pray? What words am I supposed to use? Is it okay to pray for a parking spot? And you know my, what? My mum, if we were in the middle of Knox City Shopping Centre a week before Christmas, she would pray for a parking spot and there it was every time. Astounding. But is it wasting God's time? Do we pray for rain for the farmers but sunshine for my golf round tomorrow? Not that I pray golf, but you understand what I mean. Having looked at who we pray to, what is the use of our words and talking? How or rather where do we actually go for a how-to guide to pray? The obvious answer is in somewhere around 50 to 60 words, depending on the translation that you might use, and is what we call, now call the Lord's Prayer. That's our focus of attention for today. The portion of scripture that was read is part of a bigger passage around what we refer to as the Sermon on the Mount, a portion of scripture we could quite honestly spend an entire year of messages on. But today we will focus on parts of Matthew 6. The first eight verses revolve around the difference between two types of prayer, those of the Gentiles and kingdom prayer. We can note the advice against repetitiveness, against standing on the corner streets and belting out our prayers so that everybody can hear, compared to being in private, praying to the one who knows you and who you know from your heart. The Lord's Prayer, as we've come to call it, is a simple and bold address to a loving Heavenly Father. And it contains six equally simple and direct requests. Are we supposed to recite this prayer infinitum, or is it a formula to follow? I'll leave that question for you to decide. But here today, I simply want to address the requests and how they can and should shape all our prayers and our words. Hallowed be your name. Here we recognise a holy God, pure and perfect, that he will be honoured above all else, that we would revere his majestic holiness and in that we would call forth his power which is also pure and perfect. You see, prayer begins with God's person and his character and that he would be seen as holy in the sight of all creation. Your kingdom come, God's creation. In its entirety, when first created, creation, the world, was also pure and perfect and whole. We are his kingdom, the sheep of his pasture, and we are wanting his kingdom to be established here on earth as it is in heaven. In this part of scripture, Jesus had been preaching that the kingdom had come near because of his own presence. And with Jesus, God's kingdom does arrive, yet the kingdom is still to come. And we hold these two things in tension. We enjoy the benefits of God's kingdom and yet we wait for its fullness to come. In effect, we are praying that the curtain will be drawn back and God, his rule, his grace, his kingdom will be made plain to everyone everywhere. Your will be done. Help us to do things your way, for your glory, to bring all people to you. We long for the day when every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. But in the meantime, we pray that things that are in heaven would be increasingly the way they hear, they, that they are here on earth. And we are part of that. Our behaviour, our talk, the way we live is an influence on how heaven looks. Your will be done becomes our passion and our work, his work in his way for his glory and kingdom, the kingdom here and now and the kingdom to come. These first three requests concern themselves directly with God and that is always a good beginning. When we start with God, we know we have things in the right order. 
But then we start to see a change in the direction of prayer. And having prayed and seen God's character and his concerns for his kingdom, next we request a loaf of bread. Was it really just about a loaf? Daily bread. Here we recognise that God takes care of his children, all peoples, all his creation, not just literally food, but all our needs, physically, emotionally and spiritually. And there seems to be an emphasis on the daily nature of this care, this request. It is for today, not for a 12-month period, not for something to store up for the next month, but we come to God each day for our needs, not for a storehouse for the days to come, but the need for today is fulfilled so we can be effective for him today, his kingdom in the here and now. Forgiveness. This entire statement includes our own sins and the way we forgive others, and it lumps them together. How we forgive others is the way we will be forgiven. Jesus had just told the crowds listening, only the pure in heart will see God, and therefore we require his mercy. We need forgiveness of sins. And to enter the coming kingdom, we beg for that mercy that we might enter through the doors of eternity. This in turn is reflected in the way we too forgive others. Temptation and evil. Now, I'm not sure about you, but I need, in capital letters, all the guidance and all the wisdom and the courage and the strength in my day-to-day -day life when there is so much around me that would seek to turn me in a direction other than the one that God has for me. We seek his help that we might endure this time of testing and that in these days of evil, we will remain God's faithful servants. In this, we recognise our own weaknesses and our own frailties and we lean on his leading and his deliverance, that God will shelter us and deliver us from the evil that pervades the world around us in so many forms. This prayer, this formula, if you like, teaches us that our speech to God, like our whole existence, is driven by God and his kingdom. We are caught up into God's plans for the whole world. We are his participants in this and we pray for the glory of his name, the coming of his kingdom, the doing of his will and in turn we pray for our own concern, our own anxieties, that these two will be shaped and influenced by him and his kingdom. In these 50 to 60 words we have a form of prayer Six requests, particles, thoughts to consider when we put our words, our thoughts, our prayers together. In the end, our prayers should always be about God and his kingdom, brought to us in the form of his son, Jesus. Jesus continues to teach us what it looks like to pray to a holy God. And in the end, it's all about Jesus and his coming kingdom, which came with Jesus and is still to come, and we hold intention. But it's always about Jesus.